So in this video, I want to introduce two things. One is the spin tool, um, and the other is being able to draw off a background. Uh, so let's first introduce this background. Uh, so looking from straight on, um, if uh, you've got a sketch, you know, you've been kind of thinking on pen, pencil and paper or what sort of shapes, then I think it's a really good idea to work in, in pencil and paper first before you possibly come onto screen. Um, and you've got a shape. I've got a very lame uh, profile here of uh, a, an object. All you have to do is grab the uh, drawing and pull it over and drop it into your scene. Okay. Um, and uh, you can see this has been entered in uh, to your collection of things uh, and it's an object just like anything else except that you know it's it's not a 3d object so it won't export as an stl or anything like that it is just a picture that's kind of been put in there so that you can draw up against it um, so that's uh, I'm, I'm calling it my background drawing but uh, i can now use that you know as a kind of a, a performer to draw against now what I want to do is just draw this kind of profile in a mesh. So the best way for me to do that is possibly to add a plane and that will then give me the vertices required for a mesh. So um, that was added in object mode. Go with a tab into edit mode, select one vertice um, and then, as we've done before, invert that control I because I want to delete the others and X for delete vertice. So I've now just got this one vertice here. I now actually want it to be on the red line, you know, in line with the drawing. So press N for numbers and uh, items is what I'm after. And it's the Y direction, the green direction. If I then put in zero there and enter, it goes back in the y direction to zero. So I'm now absolutely sort of um, on, on the red line there. Uh, let's just put on the marker here so I can then move that in to the base of my drawing. Now really important here is that I need to be looking straight on because anything I do, I'm now going to, you know, um, uh, duplicate this vertice to draw up the side of the line here uh, to draw a profile and it will draw up however at whatever angle the screen is so I must be looking from absolutely straight on all right so numpad one um, or you know right from the y direction there let's just close this that was a an n key numbers in key all right and um, so I'm just going to use the cursor and let's move this up, shift left, middle mouse button, just so I can move that up. My vertice, I'm in edit mode. My vertice, the only sort of mesh object I've got on the screen is this vertice, is now selected. Um, and uh, as we did once before with the, uh, the drawing in 3D, hold down control, and then it's a right click, and that then draws a new point and a line between it. Now, I've got to kind of think about the distance between my lines because this is going to become the mesh. Um, and uh, this is the distance then between, you know, all these sort of um, uh, the mesh points. Uh, right click, right click, holding down shift and I can right click. Oh yeah, I'm drawing very straight, but anyway. And then just pull it down again, hold down the shift and right click. And here's the shoulder coming in here. Okay. So now if I actually just switch off the background, you can see I've managed to draw that profile rather roughly. Um, as a line of vertices and joined. So I'm just going to try and smooth that out a little bit. Smooth vertices. Oh, that sort of pulled it up a little bit. 
uh, in the process the bottom one probably got pulled up a bit so let's just pull this down a bit okay now what I want to do is kind of sweep this like on a pottery wheel all the way around as one profile um, and there's a tool over here called spin that does that a for all to select it all now I want to spin it around 360 degrees so I hit the, the um, spin tool um, and pull this a little and in doing that it brings up this window here and here's the angle by how much it's going to get spun so I want to go 360 degrees so I type in 360 and enter and there it's pushed it all the way around then here is the number of steps so you know here that's this distance between that and that that is a step and as always i want to sort of be trying to get this quite square so i can then up the number of steps to get more detail all right i think that's looking quite good yeah no, i'm happy with that um, and the other thing you must just check and that this auto merge um, is uh, ticked because what's happening is literally a surface has been spun around and then back to here and if you don't do auto merge then this won't be stuck together along this line here um, that uh, the, this would pull apart uh, when you start modeling in it but anyway auto merge should get that to merge together and now you've got a solid form and um, there we go now I actually want to sculpt onto this let me just get out of uh, the spin mode back to the selector that was to get rid of that sort of blue line okay so I'm now back in selector mode um, now I want to sculpt onto the surface um, but I know if I go into sculpt and start sculpting that it's so coarse you kind of won't get a lot happening Okay, so just undo that. So I'm going to go back into object mode. And then in object mode, I want to add a modifier of multi-resolution. Okay, so spanner, modify, multi-resolution, and then subdivide, subdivide. Actually, let's go even one more. Okay, so if I go into wireframe, Oh, not yet because I haven't applied it. So let me just apply it. Now if I go into wireframe, you can see it's a really kind of fine, fine. Back to solid. Now if I go over into what we want, sculpt mode and I start sculpting on it with say just the pull or the grab. Okay, um, now these uh, sculpt tools have got a properties box over here under kind of the tool set. So um, it defaults to this, that is the plane or the surface we've made, but we want the information for this toolbox. So that's under the, uh, the little screwdriver item, and there's kind of a visualization of kind of what the texture might look like that you're playing with. Um, and uh, so let me go back to grab and uh, you, know, you need to fiddle and have a look with all of this but um, something that's often quite useful is the symmetry so I'm going to switch it on in the X and Y symmetry so now what happens if if I kind of go straight on over here you can see when I make a mark it's going to happen there there and it's also happened on the other side uh, so let's actually go rather to um, inflate blob. Uh, I think inflate is better. Ah, now that's really interesting. It's deflating, um, and that must be something to do with the surface we've made. You know, surfaces have got an inside and outside and direction, and this is just too much computer stuff. But what we can do here somewhere is there we are. It's uh, inflate is apparently. Uh, um, highlight at the moment so if we go the other way now it should yeah should start coming out at us 
and um, in here somewhere there is also a string so let's slide that up a bit because I want things to happen relatively quickly and then nothing is now happening that one's working all right and I'm just going to go back to the pool tool I'm just wanting to add quite a strong texture to this part over here. And then at the top here, what have we got? Uh, and again, I've got it on the symmetry. Now switch the symmetry off and just put one more. Oh, actually, I could switch the Y back on, I think. Yeah, and that'll happen on the other side. Okay, so working quite roughly, but it's just to give you kind of an idea of things. Um, and then I can go back into edit mode, kind of do any more editing I needed to. Or object mode. This might be now a little bit taller and I want to scale in the Z direction. Up there. Okay, so there we have kind of building an object in spin and then taking it over into sculpture, putting a texture on it, and then this could be saved, exported as STL, and printed.